Welcome to Salem, where we have come not to try to appease God so that he'll provide for our daily needs, but because we have a God who provides for our every need. He provides for the simplest of things, like bread, all the way up to our greatest of needs, which is the salvation for our sins. And because of that, because of his great goodness, his great generosity, we realize that we, we owe our everything to him. And we come so that we can learn of his love and so that we can share that love with others. But still, that doubt of whether or not we'll have what we need or what we want still persists. And yet we still need for our God to remind us how much he provides for us. And we'll, we'll hear just that today in our lessons, in our prayers, in our devotion, and even in our hymns that we'll sing. So we'll take as our theme that God provides bread and then some, and we'll focus on that with our opening hymn, Now Think We All Are God. You have that in your worship folder and also on the screen and also no, hymn 610 in the hymnals that you now have in your worship, in your, in your pews. May the Lord bless our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess. Lord. 
God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for all of our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by His authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, though we do not deserve your goodness, you still provide for all of our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let me take your seats. In our first lesson, we go to the account from Exodus, where after only two and a half months of being freed from Egypt, after seeing the Lord's hand usher them and part the waters of the Red Sea so that they could go across safely and Pharaoh's armies would be trapped underneath that same water that they walked through. Now they're complaining that they had it so much better back in Egypt because there at least they had food. They had pots of meat. They had apparently more meat than they knew what to do with. And now they think the Lord just took them out in the wilderness to die. But the Lord, despite his people's grumbling, takes care of them and gives them bread and meat to satisfy them because he is incomparably gracious that even when he's dealing with his stubborn, obstinate people, he shows his love and care because he can't help but show his love and goodness to his people. Exodus chapter 16. The whole Israelite community set out from Elam and came to the desert of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day of the second month, after they had come out of Egypt, in the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them to see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in. And that is to be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening, 
you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning you will see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, You will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening and all the bread you want in the morning because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses told Aaron, Say to the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked toward the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared of the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of our God. We continue with our psalm today, Psalm 145, where we give praise to the Lord who provides for all that we need. We'll sing this together in unison. In our second lesson from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, the Apostle Paul, by inspiration of the Spirit, reminds us why God gives us bread and then some. It's not so that we can fill our own storehouses and sit on a mound of more than we need. It's so that we can be generous with others, so that as we have opportunity, we can share the love of Jesus with them. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And God is able to bless you abundantly, So that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. 
Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for the, and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion and through us your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This is the word of our God. Please stand. Hallelujah. Human beings ate the bread of angels. He sent them all the food they could eat. Hallelujah. The Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 6. Our gospel for today will serve as the basis for our devotion a little later on. By this time, it was late in the day. So his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said. And it's already very late. Send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered, You give them something to eat. They said to him, That would take more than a year and a half of wages. Are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat? How many loaves do you have? He asked. Go and see. When they found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. He also divided the two fish among them as well. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of men who had eaten was 5,000. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may take your seats as we continue with our hymn of the day. Rejoice my heart, be glad and sing. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God, your Heavenly Father, and from your Lord 
your Savior, Jesus Christ, who provides for every single one of your needs. Our gospel lesson for today, Jesus feeding the 5,000, it is a lesson that I'm willing to bet that most of you know very well. You know it very well because it pops up every year in the set of readings that we use because it is found in all four of the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all have their account of Jesus feeding 5,000 men plus the women and children that were also there. It's a familiar one. And yet every single time there is something that jumps out and it's always something that we need to pay attention to. And looking at the lesson and studying it this week, what jumped out at me was the two competing mindsets of ministry that we see in the disciples and Jesus. And their competing mindsets for ministry that, honestly, (laughs) they do battle in my mind a lot. And I know they do battle in the minds of our men who sit on our council, our members who sit on boards and try to get things done around Salem. They probably go through your minds as you think about doing ministry with Salem, reaching out to others in the name of Jesus in your own lives. Because, you know what? It pits the ever-increasing need that we see around us. All the people, all the work, the cost that goes into it, with the mindset that just wants to do it. (laughs) That just wants to, to minister to everyone that we possibly can. The mindset that is worried about money and numbers and effectiveness and the attitude that says, these people need Jesus and they're here and we got to take care of them. There's so much work to do. And that's what the disciples saw when that crowd of people was there and it's getting dark and they need to be fed. Their own stomachs were probably growling. And someone needed to feed the people. And Jesus says, you give them something to eat. And as we, as a church, look at the community that God's placed us in, look at the families that come to us for school, the people that, that come onto our campus looking for, for this or that, and it can seem just so intimidating, it can seem so scary, it can seem as if, you know, if, if we do this, then we won't be able to do that, and we, we pit things against each other, and we, we just think it all hinges on what we can do on our own. And we need Jesus to come to us like he did to the disciples and say, you give them something. Give them something. And today, we're going to use this lesson to help us see how we can give people something. How we can give the crowds of people that are coming to us, that we live among, that, that, that we need to serve, how we can give them something. And it does involve evaluating what we have and then doing ministry with that and then enjoying the blessings. Now, as we seek to do what the disciples were told to do and give people something, we do need to assess what's going on. Now, our lesson picks up with Jesus ministering to a large crowd of people as the sun begins to set. It's probably past dinner time. And Jesus was there, first of all, trying to get some some rest and relaxation time but the crowds had followed and he saw the crowds of people and in the verse right before our selection for tonight we're told that he ministered to them because 
his heart went out to them. He had pity on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So as we evaluate what we have, and if we're going to use that in this story, we're, we have to evaluate the fact that he had people there. Jesus and the disciples had people gathered around them. And the disciples immediately, as the day grew on and it grew dark, they started focusing on what they didn't have. They didn't have bread. They didn't have food. How are we going to feed all these people? They go to Jesus and and they want him to just send them away. They didn't didn't think that there was any way that they could feed them. And, And honestly, at that point in time, they were right. But just that question... Just that ask of Jesus to, to, to just disperse the people so that they can get something to eat, that wasn't necessarily wrong. But when Jesus told them, you give something to eat, in their mind, they had already done their assessment of what they had. And their, their mind, in, in John's gospel, we're told it was Philip who gives us the detail that, you know what, a half a year's wages... It, that's at least as much as it would take to feed these people. We're not going to spend that kind of money to feed these people. We can't do it. They evaluated, they saw the people, but they didn't see the other blessing that was the very guy who earlier in this chapter had sent them out on a mission trip where they had the authority to cast out demons. They had witnessed Jesus do miracles before. They had witnessed Jesus do miracles that involved food, water, and wine. They saw that. They knew that Jesus has power over the, way, the normal way that things work. And all of that was absent from their mind as they're criticizing Jesus for telling them to give these people something to eat. All too often, when we're trying to make plans for how we're going to move forward, we view things in a dollar and cents mentality. It can be tempting to see money first and then the ministry. Because we think, well, you know, in order to be effective, We always have to make sure we have everything before we can even think about feeding people with Jesus. But the people are here. And the people need to hear about Jesus. Whether or not we think we have enough to be able to provide for every single one of their needs that we think might come up when we're doing ministry. And that fear of not having enough causes us to think, well, we have to send them away. Or we can't do that, we can't do this. We we can end up limiting ourselves so much so that we just do the bare minimum. And we, we do that claiming that we're being faithful with what God has given us, but a lot of the time we're just not. We're afraid to act. We forget that the one who is on our side is the one who has power over all things. I'm not saying that we should expect a feeding the 5,000 miracle. But that's the God who's on our side. Yes, when Jesus told the disciples to feed the people, he had them assess what they had. And they, they found the five loaves and the two fish from that boy's lunch. And with that, God did immeasurably more than they could even ask or imagine He fed those people. But their evaluation of what they had made them not even attempt to keep the people around so so that they could continue to minister to them. Jesus knew that these people were sheep without a shepherd, that if they were sent away, then they could be, they were fodder for wolves. We've got people that come to us that are in our community that are like sheep without shepherds. That if we don't find a way to bring them in, 
that if, if we think that, well, we, we can't do this, so we're not going to do anything, then they're left to be scattered elsewhere, and who knows who they're going to come across. Maybe they'll come across a church that does teach Jesus and will bring them in and take care of them there. But are you willing to take that chance on a maybe? Or do you want to find a way to use what God has given us and do so faithfully, trusting that even if we think it might be so small, that God can still use it to do amazing things? Because what we have been given is what we are given to do ministry with. And just what we see going up around our campus, I think has amazed a lot of people. With what we sought with so little, we've been able to do a lot. God has blessed us with people that, that have given more than they probably thought they could. People that have done more than they thought they ever would. Dedicated called workers, dedicated members who love God and love his people. But all of us still wrestle with that mentality of, well, what if there's not enough? Well, remember who your God is. Remember what we learned in our second lesson. That the reason God is generous with us is so that we can be generous with others. So we can be generous on every single occasion. This doesn't mean that we're always going to be having building projects, that we're always going to be able to do a whole, whole lot of things that are money intensive. But we've got a lot of love to share with people. We, we've got a lot of people that need to hear about Jesus and we can find a way to serve them. And I think you'll find that as more people hear about what we're doing here, then we'll be able to do more. God will multiply what we're able to do. Now, yeah, it's not going to be the actual multiplication. It's probably not going to be the actual multiplication that happened when the disciples were distributing the loaves and the fish. crowd of 5,000 men, plus the women and the children that were there, were actually fed by those five loaves and two fish. If God wanted to, he could still work a miracle like that as we do ministry. But he's also provided people who have been proven to be generous in a lot of ways. And we can use whatever, whatever God gives to us, however he gives it to us, so that we can take care of the souls that are in front of us. We can give thanks like Jesus gave thanks for the, two, for the five loaves and two fish and do ministry with what he's given us like he was giving his disciples to do ministry with what they had. And when we do that ministry, when we do the work that the Lord has given us, has put right in front of us and we don't try to find excuses to not do it, well then we're going to see blessings every single time. The immediate blessings that the disciples saw were the 12 basketfuls of leftovers that they, that they grabbed. One for each of them if they wanted it. But the blessings that we get to enjoy as a congregation are ones that we can see even right before our eyes. More than a few of you have been a member of this congregation for generations. You've seen generations before you sit in Salem classrooms. You've seen children and grandchildren sit in your classrooms, in these classrooms. That's a blessing. Members of our community coming in and being served with Jesus, that's a blessing that we can see with our own eyes, that we can enjoy even now. People from different walks of life coming to hear, coming to hear Jesus and to be fed by him classrooms full of children that are hearing about Jesus truthfully and able to take that home. Teachers that care not just about the children that are in their seats, but about the families that those children go back to. These are all blessings that we have that we get to enjoy now. The ministry that we get to do leads to all of these blessings and a lot of them we're not even going to see until the Lord takes us home 
And then our eyes are going to be open to so many more of them. I'm convinced that all of us are going to be walking around heaven and we're going to run into people that have been affected by the chances that we've had to share Jesus with them, the chances that our church has had to share Jesus with them, and that is a wonderful blessing that we get to enjoy not just simply basketfuls of food, not just a pat on the back after a, a well-done outreach event, but the knowledge that because of the ministry that we're able to do with whatever God has blessed us with is affecting souls for eternity. There are things when we read familiar Bible stories that jump out out at, at us. And I hope that as you think back on this lesson of Jesus feeding the 5,000, you're amazed at your God's power over his creation that he could cause so little to feed so many. But I hope that you also take away the idea that we shouldn't have a money-first mentality when it comes to doing ministry. But we make people our priority. And we find a way to serve them with what we have. And pray the Lord would bless our efforts. And he has. And Lord willing, he will continue to do so until the day he returns. Amen. Please stand. And may the peace that surpasses all understanding guide and guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time, please remain standing as we confess the Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the conscious fire, but was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into God. You may take your seats as we continue with our prayer of the church. In our prayers today, we want to remember uh, Tom Griepentrog as he recovers from a successful shoulder surgery earlier this week. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. In great praise to him who rules earth, sea, and sky, and in thanksgiving for the blessing of creation and life that come from his abundant goodness, that God would give us boldness to speak of his awesome deeds and sing always of his righteousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the church, that our Lord who is able to do far more abundantly than we all, than all that we ask or think, would be glorified in his church and in Christ Jesus, and that he would ground us in love, give us a faith rooted in Christ's promises, and strengthen us to comprehend with all the saints his love that surpasses all knowledge. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, To the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that he would bless our families for all marriages, that he would make them strong and fruitful according to his will, and for every home, that God's word would rule there, uniting it in forgiveness and causing Christ to dwell in every heart through faith. Let us pray to the Lord. For our country, that the Lord might, that the Lord would spare us and future generations. For our leaders, that by God's blessing, they would rule according to his good pleasure. And for God's protection over our armed forces, police, and all public servants, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the sick and those in need, 
especially Tom Gruppentrog, as he recovers from a successful shoulder surgery earlier this week, that God would give healing and protection, encouraging all people who are in need in this life by the recognition of his fatherly providence, known through Christ, our Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. For all these things and whatever else that you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you, the very same Christ who also taught us to pray. Our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. We close with the hymn, Lord, you love the cheerful giver. <laughs> 